Hi, I'm Professor Shafai, and um, um, in, in this laboratory, Thinking Laboratory, which is part of the, uh, our research centre, newly developed research centre, we operate in terms of uh, making uh, devices, uh, plastic electronics, uh, which is a new approach to electronics. Um, we are not, we are working sort of away from the silicon technology and um, the technique is very, very, very simple and it doesn't need all these uh, uh, expensive equipment that you, we currently use in uh, silicon industry. Uh, as you can see in the fume cupboard, we have got a range of uh, uh, chemicals, uh, polymers and uh, small organic molecules which we are going to dissolve it in, in solvent. And once we, that's done, uh, we could um, come across to our uh, glove box. We do everything in in, inside the glove box because um, in organic materials, they have um, a, a sort of tendency to oxidize and uh, the electrical properties change in the presence of oxygen. So we tend to do everything inside the glove box. And uh, here we've got uh, a, a spin quarter. And uh, as you can see, number of pipettes there. We take a sample of the liquid and uh, while the glass substrate sits inside uh, the, the, the spin quarter, we could actually create the film, very sort of about 100 nanometer. And once that film is created, we need to put the top electrodes uh, we take the device, then we remove it from there, we bring it across to the far end uh, where we have got the metallization rig. In the me metallization rig, we have got, uh, as you can see, we, we, we've purposely designed that the metallization rig is an in, uh, integral part of the glove box, so at no instant there is uh, interference or our uh, device is being um, in touch with oxygen. Um, once the device has been created, we go further back to the middle section where we have got a um, solar simulator. So we want to test how efficient is our system. By creating a one sunlight here uh, through solar simulator, we, we, we could actually uh, test our device to see what the, its efficiency. Obviously, our job doesn't end there because once you make a device, you ought to know uh, why it is efficient or why it is not efficient. So from that sense, a number of uh, techniques we're going to apply. Some of these techniques are really work as our own eyes. Obviously, we, we're not small enough to go inside the 100 nanometer device to find out what's happening inside there. So we have to um, sort of uh, look at uh, surface and the bulk of uh, bulk properties uh, of the, the films that we have created. Um, here we've got one of uh, our results that uh, we have recently produced. As you can see, there are two colors, um, sort of uh, green and red. And uh, the reasons we have color coded them uh, green and red it's simply because um, we are using two different material in our um, sort of devices. One of them being a polymer, which is absorbs light, and the other one, electron acceptor, which actually um, uh, is used for uh, dissociation of the uh, electrons and also uh, electron transporting layer. So we want when the photon goes in, we want excitons is created. Exciton is going to split up to constituent uh, positive and negative charges, and we want to pump it to the external circuit to the electrodes. So from that sense, how they, the actual, uh, this green and red uh, polymers and acceptor uh, would uh, form within the, uh, on the surface and within the bulk is important to us because um, uh, I, as you know, I, I, I stated that the electrons have to get to the outside, to the electrode. 
So how the arrangement of uh, the green beads and red beads would be important to us because if there is no connection be between the green beads, in a way the electrons can't get out. And that is not what we want. So we want to improve the efficiency of the device. Um, <clears throat> the technique that we have used is very innovative because what we have done, we have used a, a, an instrument called um, Raman, Raman spectroscopy, and we have had a look at the surface uh, the, of the device. Um, as you can see, there are different colors uh, on, the, on the surface, red and green. Now, if we do a chemical etching of the surface, that means using a solvent to remove, let's say, um, 10 nanometer of the device, uh, of the film rather, uh, we could actually go into the uh, deeper into the bulk and have a look at a snapshot of the, uh, the actual surfaces. So we could build a 3D profile of the whole bulk, which is really important to us because we, we, can, we can see what's happening inside. This is um, nanostructuring in a way. We want to understand how they rearrange themselves or self-organize themselves within the bulk of the film. Um, <clears throat> uh, further to that, we use X-ray analysis to, uh, to have a look at um, uh, the, the bulk properties, that is the structural properties of the device. And we have compared or we normally compare to the uh, techniques that we have developed ourselves to see whether the two uh, techniques which are different approach but uh, ends up to the uh, same sort of results. And we have identified the techniques that we have developed is extremely accurate uh, when we compare it to our X-ray results. Also, the efficiency of the device is very important in, in terms of uh, the thickness. Or well, the thickness of a device is about 100 nanometer. Now, 100 nanometer is a very, very uh, sort of small dimension. And um, so if we get it to 150 nanometer, our device efficiency will go down. And if we go below that, sort of go to 60 nanometer or so, also our efficiency uh, drops down. So around 100 nanometer, we have identified the best efficiencies. So measurement of the thickness of the device is important. And here we've got a, a thickness um, measurement instrument where you can see a needle here. The needle itself, uh, the tip end, would tr um, sort of travel on the glass substrate. And then when it gets to the field, we go further up and sort of travel along the, 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 the actual film itself. So that will give us a really good profile of the uh, surface of the device, which is um, normally we get about um, sort of two or three nanometer difference to uh, what we anticipate the device to be, uh, based on our experience when we spin coat it. Um, now from here, um, we, we, we may I stress that when, when you do any test, ensure that this is going to be done last because the needle could actually scratch the polymer. And so if you're doing any test, ensure this is the last one. Otherwise, all your other uh, sort of tests may not be as accurate. Um, here we've got um, atomic force microscopy. And um, the reason we call it atomic force microscopy is simply because it's um, uh, sort of uh, accuracy is in the interatomic uh, spacing range, uh, which is about 10 angstrom. Here we have um, arranged our um, device, the, 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 the microscope AFM to be uh, sort of suspended here. And the reason we put it on the suspension it's because our laboratory is near the railway station and for that reason any movement, uh, vibration on the floor, we want it to be dampened by the actual suspension rather than uh, interfere with our results. It is a very accurate technique in a sense that, as you can see, there is a tip hand. That tip hand would uh, actually touch, um, well, it doesn't touch, but it comes to very close proximity of the and the film and as it comes down as you can see as it comes down 
then this end, the tip and the, this, this part will go higher. And if you've got a laser actually shine in on uh, the actual, uh, this section, we could uh, get the profile of the surface, which is really, um, we've got a sample of that here. Um, it is uh, very important to us, as I stated earlier, that um, we've got two uh, different material, for example, polymer and small organic molecule that are uh, mixed in, in a way. Therefore, the constituents that uh, ap appears on the surface um, would have a different phase. For example, one phase where you go on into um, sort of uh, polymer phase, or you could go into the next phase, which is going to be a small organic molecule. They've got different uh, degree of hardness to them. And in, in that sense, we could um, get sort of distinguish that which area of the surface is with, um, um, with material which is um, um, electron acceptor or electron donor or polymer or uh, a small organic molecule uh, resides. Um, <clears throat> uh, this is uh, not the only um, kinds of uh, work that we do here. We tend to have um, a number of other approaches. This is not, for example, um, plastic electronics, the solar cell uh, OPV uh, devices is a part of uh, um, the, 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 what we do here. Uh, we do also OLED. Uh, as you know these days, uh, your um, display at, at home. A few years ago, you had the television in the corner of the room, bulky things. Now you hang it on, on your wall with um, sometimes the thicknesses of uh, the whole thing uh, around five centimeters or so and the thickness of the layers in few nanometers. Um, so all LEDs are and organic, uh, in a way, organic uh, uh, electronics um, is the thing for the future, here to stay. Uh, we use uh, or also OFATs, which is uh, organic field effect transistors. Um, so there are three types of devices we develop uh, here. We've got ra a range of courses from the undergraduate, you, uh, you'll be able to actually work in these laboratories and do your projects for your undergraduate. And for your postgraduate, we've got a number of uh, uh, sort of uh, modules that related to uh, organic uh, electronics and um, uh, thank you for um, uh, following this video and if you need any further advice on this topic uh, please do get in touch with me um, I'm on the website the university website also um, in the center of uh, that we newly centered that we have uh, recently uh, developed thank you